Okay, we saw that the, the concept of a tangent line extends from single variable calculus to multivariable calculus in the sense of curves in, in a very straightforward way. Okay, it's exactly the same idea except now it's in, in three-dimensional space. What we want to explore now is uh, scalar functions. So f of x, y, function from some domain uh, d to r, where d is in r2. Okay, so this is what we call the scalar function. And we're going to start with functions of two variables, and later on we're going to discuss it for functions of three variables. Um, and let, let's, before we write any definitions, let's try to figure out what's going on here. What do we expect? Okay. So let me remind you what the picture is. So I'm going to draw a big picture. So here's three-dimensional space. I hope that by now when I draw this, everybody knows what they're looking at. And we have some domain down here. Uh, may maybe let's not even draw it. The domain is down here on the floor. And we have the graph of the function living up here. Some, some graph that looks something like this. I don't know. Okay, so this is the graph of our function f of x, y. Good. Everybody knows what I'm talking about, right? Now, the graph, f first of all, intuitively, do you agree that when we say a smooth graph, we're imagining something that's smooth, doesn't have any cusps in it, right? Okay, so, um, the, I don't know, some like, think of a range of mountains, but, but no, no Eiffel Towers sticking out or whatever. Okay? Now, does it make sense to say a tangent line? What is the tangent line? So if you look at, a, at this graph and you'd ask, what is the tangent line at this direction? It's, it's not really clear what direction you're talking about, right? What does make sense is to talk about the tangent plane. Okay. So if you have a graph of a function at every point, if it's smooth, and we're going to define everything, then you could say, okay, it's smooth here, it has a tangent plane rather than a tangent line. And that does seem well defined, right? And at a different point, it's going to have a different tangent plane. And at a different point, a different tangent plane. And maybe at points which are uh, extremal, Right, like a maxima or a minimum, the tangent plane is going to be flat. Do you see that? So, kind of, th the theory does extend. Do you agree that these are precisely the ideas that happen for single variable functions? Right? So that's what we somehow want to capture. That's what we want to define. How do we define for a function of two variables the tangent plane sitting here at every point? The tangent plane to the graph. Okay? And the idea, the idea, at least to start with, is the following. So let's look at some point down here in the domain, here. So this is going to be the point x0, zero, y0. Zero. Some point down in the domain. So its y component is this, and its x component is this. Right? Let's make x slightly longer. So this is the x component and this is the y component of this point. Good? The value of the function at this point, I have to pull it all the way up and see when it hits the graph. Here. Ta-da! So this is the value of f at x0, y0. Good? Now, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do, is restrict my attention only to this line that has a fixed x0. All the points along this line in the domain have x0 as their x-coordinate, 
and their y-coordinate ranges. Do you agree? Does everybody see that? So along this line, I'm going to take a bunch of colors. Along this line, here in the domain, so this is the line where all the points have the same x0. Okay? And I can look at the value of the function only on these points. So up here, up here on the graph, here's the value at this point, and 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 here's the value at this point. At every point on this red line, I'm going to look at the value of the function up here, and what I'm going to get is something that looks maybe like this, for example. I, I just did connect the dots and missed every single one of them. But you didn't see that because they're small, and I erased the ones that were bigger. Okay, clear? Is it, a, is it clear what just happened here? Okay. Now, ignore the rest of the picture. The, everything you see, ignore it, except this red line, which is just a straight line, an axis, and this blue line, which is the graph of a function defined on these points. Okay. Do you see a single variable thing? And we can talk about the derivative at this point x0, y0. The derivative is going to be the slope of this line. Do you see that? So we're going to get some line here whose slope is precisely the derivative of this single variable function at this point. So this is the point, uh, this is the point, f at x0, y0. That's the value. Okay? Now I'm going to do the same thing, the same thing, except that now I'm not going to freeze x0 and let y range, I'm going to freeze y0 and let x range. Okay, so what I'm going to get, I'm looking at it from the side now. I'm freezing y0 and letting x range. Okay, I'm going to get a straight line parallel to the x-axis, except when I draw it, it's going to look somewhat like this, right? Because this is kind of a view with perspective, right? Do you understand that this is a line with a fixed, maybe let's indicate this, this is y0 and this is x0. This is, thi all the points along this red line have a fixed y0 and their x ranges. Do you agree? Okay. And now I'm going to look at the values of the function only above this point, these points. And I'm cheating, I'm looking at it from here and I can see these values. When I try to draw them, it's perspective it's a bit confusing but the value at this point is maybe here and the value at this point is maybe somewhere here and if I look at all of them I'm gonna get something that looks like I don't know something like that and now I only had to connect three points and in particular the one in the middle and I missed that this is so embarrassing okay is it clear what just happened here so when I'm looking from the side like this what I'm seeing is this red line down here, and this graph up here. Clear? And again, I can talk about the derivative at this point. So the derivative at this point is going to be something that looks like this. Okay, the, the, the tangent line at this point is going to be something that looks like that. Okay? Now here's what I just did. Here's what I just did. I'm going to use these markers, and I need a surface. Okay, that to, 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 to express this graph, here's the surface. It's nice and smooth. Okay. And I took a point, some point. Okay, I looked at this point here. See the point? Okay. And I first only, only paid attention to a cross section like this. I'm not going to cross section the surface. It's going to be painful. And then I put a tangent line. Boom. Okay. At this point. Then I took a cross section like this and put a tangent line. Is that clear? So I got this little beautiful cross sitting up here, made up of two lines. Do you agree that these two lines give you a plane? Any two lines, as long as they're not parallel, and they're not, give you a plane. 
that plane, here's the plane, well, stay planar, here's the plane, that's the tangent plane to the graph. Okay, so these two lines that I formed here, well, now I can, these two lines give a plane, prescribe a plane, and that plane is the tangent plane to the graph at the point f of x0, well, this is actually, if you want to be more precise, this is the point x0, y0, f of x0, y0. Clear? Is the idea clear? Okay. So what we want to do now, if, if you understand the idea, what we want to do now is, it, it's going to take time. There's, there's, we have to build up towards it. So the first thing we're going to define is how do we get these two lines? So th these are kind of derivatives, but they're derivatives not of, of, of the two-variable function, but of a restriction to the two-variable function to a fixed y or to a fixed x, right? So these are going to be called partial derivatives, okay? Because they're not derivatives, they're partial, okay? So that's what they're going to be called, and there are going to be two of them. There's going to be the partial derivative with respect to x and the partial derivative with respect to y. The two partial derivatives at any given point will give us two lines, and these two lines are going to prescribe a plane. Clear? Okay, so that's the idea that we're going to uh, do now, and let me define them. And in fact, it's very obvious, it's very straightforward. So, recall, so the, 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 thing we're, we're, we're generalizing is still the, the single variable idea. So if we have a single variable function, then the derivative of x, of f, well, the derivative of f at the point x0 was given by, one way of writing it was the limit is h tends to 0 of f of x0 plus h minus f of x0 divided by h. Have you used this uh, way of expressing the derivative? Okay. It's completely, completely equivalent to writing the limit as uh, um, x goes to x0, f of x minus f of x0 divided by x minus x0, right? You just replace x minus x0 by h, and that's how you transfer between the two. Okay, that's the derivative. This is calc 1. Don't you miss Calc 1? No. no? Okay. So what we want to do now, what we want to do now is the following. So uh, for fxy, we define. So let me add just one thing. There was another way of writing this, usually attributed to Leibniz, Leibniz notation was to write df divided by dx at the point x0. That's exactly the same thing, it's just different notation. Do you know that? Have you met it? Okay, good. So what we're, I'm going to use this notation now because this is a bit confusing at first. We'll, we'll, we'll discuss notation in more, in more detail later. So df to dx, the derivative of f with respect to x, so this is called the partial derivative, partial derivative of f um, with respect to x, with respect to x. Okay. At a point x0, y0, remember I'm doing it at some fixed point, it's still a pointwise definition, is what? Let's take a peek again at the picture, at the drawing that we made. I fixed, um, I fit, well, here I fixed an x and let the y range. Um, let's, it, it's this, this is the one I'm interested in now. I'm fixing a y and letting the x range. Okay, y is fixed. This graph, this blue line here, which is 
the value of the function over points of the form x comma y zero, where x ranges. So this line here, this is just this point. But this line here is the graph of f where x ranges and y zero is fixed. Do you agree? And this other line that we had here, which lives above this red line, this is the graph of f when x zero is fixed and y ranges. Clear? Okay. And what's the derivative of this thing? Y is now fixed. It doesn't change. So I'm just taking the derivative with respect to x. Okay. And that's precisely what I'm going to write now. The limit as h goes to 0 of, I'm going to write h down here, you, you always compare to this, see that it's exactly the same thing. The function is now a function of two variables, but the second variable is fixed. It's like a parameter, okay? And in the first variable, in the first variable, I have f of x0 plus h minus f at x0. Clear? So this definition geometrically precisely captures looking only at a section of the graph for fixed y0. The picture that we get is a single variable picture and we take the derivative in the usual sense. Clear? Likewise, likewise, df to dy at a point x0, y0 is the limit as h goes to 0 of f at x0 minus now x0 is fixed and now I'm taking the difference in the y's Okay, so it's going to be y0 plus h, and here y0. Clear? Okay. Okay, so... Maybe one, one last peek back to the picture. So this, 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 um... Derivative, this derivative, is the slope of the tangent line when we restrict the picture, when we look only at a cross-section, right? So back to the picture, the slope of this blue line here, which is the graph of f at x, y, 0, the slope of this black line is precisely the derivative of this thing, so it's the partial derivative of f with respect to x, at this point. Clear? Okay, and the slope of this other black line is the partial derivative of f with respect to y at this point, x0, y0. Okay? So, what I want to do next, we'll do it in a, in a separate uh, clip, what I want to do next is to calculate, to do examples of how we calculate derivatives in, in cases where we have to use the definition and in cases where we can use a more general theory, which we know, okay, it's calculating these things is just like calculating derivatives in Calc 1. The, 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 ver the fixed variable we regard as a parameter, okay, we, it, it's, a, it's, it's single variable calculations, okay, we'll do that next.